Marie Calloway doesn't want to participate in this profile. Four months, the introverted writer has known that I was working on a story about her and her writing, as well as the often loathsome reactions her work garnered a little less than a decade ago. I tried reaching out to her through her friends, her agent, her former publisher, and she politely declined every time. It didn't seem like Calloway was displeased, just bemused and evidently uninterested in being directly involved. I think she thinks it's funny to be absent in a profile like this, Annalise Ogard, a filmmaker and Calloway's friend, told me in an interview. They've been friends since middle school, having found each other on Live Journal at 14, a lot of the people in Calloway's life encountered her on the internet as teenagers, long before she became a writer and a symbol for oversharing. I really think the driving motive here is her loopy sense of humor. But if Calloway had suddenly become convivial and media-friendly, I guess I'd be disappointed. It just wouldn't make sense given the nature and tone of her brief public career, one that started around 2010 and ended abruptly around 2016. Part of her appeal, even when she was still on Facebook and doing readings in independent bookstores throughout New York, was that she wasn't very big on explaining herself. When she deleted her once prolific Tumblr account a decade ago, her reasoning was brief, dislike being watched, she wrote. If you were on the internet in the 2010s, you're probably aware of Callaway's work, even if you can't quite remember the specifics. Her writing appeared on websites like Thought Catalog and Vice, which were dedicated to archiving the feelings of upwardly mobile white millennials. Then in 2012 came the story that brought her both notoriety and ridicule, Adrian Brody was published online by Mumu House, a small press founded by outlet writer Tao Lin in 2008. In it, Callaway describes meeting a man online and sleeping with him. He's significantly older than her, has more power in their dynamic, and has a girlfriend. I know you said you don't want me to say this, Brody, a pseudonym seemingly selected because of the absurdity of naming him after someone so famous, tells her at the end of their encounter but you will connect with someone one day. It's just not going to be me. Amidst the female personal essay bloom of the 2010s, the lengthy piece went viral. It wasn't tough to figure out who Callaway was writing about. According to the Rumpus, the story had previously been published on her now deleted Tumblr and used the name of a real literary figure, Rob Horning, then a senior editor and now the executive editor at the New Inquiry, at least in New York media he might never be able to shake the association completely. Horning has kept quiet publicly about the essay, which paints him as yet another man with an inferiority complex who cheats on his girlfriend with a much younger woman. Adrian Brody sparked a debate about the ethics of outing someone's bad behavior, the value of confessional writing, and whether Calloway was a good artist or just a pretty girl provocateur who knew that writing graphically about cum would get her some attention. It's always been acceptable for men to completely consume young women for their art, Ogard said. But Marie writes about this relationship with this man and everyone's like, whatever happened to discretion? There were stark contrasts between the prevailing arguments about her, Calloway was either a calculating Lolita in training who exposed a man's legal but distasteful indiscretions for her own professional gain, or she was a fawn among sharks not understanding how she was being taken advantage of by the men in her life. With writing like Miss Calloway's, it's tempting to believe that there is some sort of feminist impulse at work, that she derives power from humiliating men with her sexuality, the same tool they used to objectify her, Kat Stoffel wrote in the New York Observer in 2011. But most of her subjects, she's done it more than once, were complicit, willing, and even flattered. Some people found her work refreshingly honest in the writing crisp and memorable. Others felt troubled by how much of herself she was exposing, sometimes literally, like the photos of her cherubic face and near-naked body that appeared in her book. Her writing also served as an opportunity for some to scold her under the guise of caution. It does no favors to young female writers to convince them that they are courageous voices in the wilderness for dedicating their talents to writing stories that are received as lurid, not literary. Hamilton Nolan wrote in a post about Callaway on Gawker. Let's all shut up more in 2012. Thank you for watching. Please, subscribe.